Throughout college, when people asked me what kind of music I liked, I had a group of artists ready to go to kind of give them my general taste, right? Snail Mail was always in that group, I would say. Pine Grove, Snail Mail, Turnover, Big Thief, you, you get the idea. Super vulnerable writing, fun guitar work, a garage-infused indie sound, a raspy, a passionate vocal, raw band energy, and really solidly structured songwriting. This is kind of what it said you liked if you name dropped Snail Mail. <laughs> no, wait, don't click away. This is not me as a Snail Mail fan being like, I miss the old Snail Mail. I don't like Valentine. This is this is not that video. I actually despise when people say I miss the old Kanye or whatever. I think after Lush and admittedly after I used it to get through one of the hardest breakups I've had, I had this lingering question of, well, where to next for snail mail? And back then and for the last four years, I didn't really have an answer for that. However, now I think after Valentine, I have just enough to speculate and I want to have that conversation with you. So just a little background before I dive in. Lindsay Jordan, 22 year old singer, songwriter, guitarist from Elliott City, Maryland, kind of like the burbs of Baltimore, has a pretty extensive background in music extending back to like the age of five, I believe. She was classically trained and has played guitar pretty much all of her life. She's played in jazz band, church band, school plays, any group setting really, you could play guitar. Lindsay's probably done it. When you listen to Habit and Lush, I think that pretty clearly comes through, right? If I were to describe both projects as like band music, I think that would make sense. These songs were arranged for a three and sometimes four piece band to rock all the way through them. Lindsay's presence is super melodic, not just vocally, but also with her guitar. And her and Ray often have really great moments where they play off each other in between passages. And Alex works himself nicely into those moments too. It feels tight, cohesive, and written with everyone in the room in mind. It almost feels fun in that way too. It does feel fun in that way too. You can kind of imagine these tunes looking and feeling fun live. If you want proof of that, just watch Snail Mail kill it as a trio on Audio Tree Live. All this, everything I described made the indie scene go absolutely bonkers, lose their mind for Snail Mail at the time, myself included. And while no, Lush is not like a perfect record by any means, the energy captured there makes for one hell of a breakup album that you can kind of not find anywhere else. And on that note, I really don't blame Lindsay for taking as much time as she did to crowd Valentine. Because when you release your debut and people cling to it so tightly like that, you're naturally afraid of your next move. You're like, is this what they want? Or more importantly, is this what I even want? And like any artist, she's been on record saying she does not want to be pigeonholed. She says she's want to be grouped in with like the sad indie women and I get that and at the same time she didn't want to make the lush too which as a fan, I understood and also wanted, you know, I wanted her to grow and experiment. And I think we get that on Valentine and that's why I like it. It's Lindsay dropping herself into new situations, new song structures, new sound palettes, new everything. There's a lot more groove in Valentine than Lush and there's a lot more variety in instrumentation in general. But what's nice is that underneath it all is still that vulnerable writer that you knew from four years ago. But the cognitive dissonance I was having when trying to really articulate my feelings on Stale Mail in a video was this. For Lush, I liked hearing the songs on the record, the studio version, but I loved seeing and hearing Lindsay play those songs live even more because the songs translated really well to a live setting. For Valentine, I kind of have the opposite experience. I much more prefer the studio version of Valentine over any of the video sessions that Snail Mail and crew have done live so far. And I think that comes down to this. Back in the day, Lindsay was a band kid, played guitar all the time in group settings, wrote music with other people, all the time. Got a band together in a room, practiced, played shows with them, made a record with them, and then recorded it. Now with Valentine, Lindsay's in this position where she has a very successful debut, and Matador is like, here, here's infinite money. <laughs> Do what you want and make your sophomore record as awesome as it can be. And she did, but these songs to me feel, I can feel that Lindsay wrote them alone and then brought them into the studio and had them fleshed out with Brad Cook. Which is a silly sentence because there's nothing wrong with that. Bring demos or half songs or full songs to a producer in a studio to flesh them out and make them a full song. People do that every day, all the time. But if we're putting this in the context of stale mail as a whole, right? Now you're reverse engineering the process we talked about for Lush. You're working a studio downward instead of band upward. You're taking really crafted, really well thought out, more songwriter focused tunes, almost doubling your three piece to a five piece and trying to make that have the same amount of power, chemistry, and magic live. And to me, when I watch these performances for any of the Valentine stuff, it seems like the band is still figuring that part out. 
Now granted, I know about Lindsay's vocal cords and her operation and everything, and I definitely wish her the speediest recovery because that sucks. But respectfully, I think what I'm talking about doesn't really have anything to do with that. It just feels like everyone on stage is more focused on playing the song correctly and with skill because the songs are more intricate and precise. And because of that, I don't really get the sense of like, hey, here are the tunes we came to play. We love them and we think they're awesome and we can't wait to just rip on them and have a ton of fun in front of you. I don't really get that like I did with Lush. In a long-winded way, what I'm trying to really say here is Valentine made me happy because it was Lindsay experimenting in the studio. There are some great songs on there. What I think was maybe a little lost in translation here was Lindsay's natural ability as a kid who played shows with a band a lot to arrange songs for a band. She's used to arranging songs with her bandmates in a way that makes them really impactful in a live setting. And more to a bigger point, I think that translation from studio material to live material, or the other way around really, is part of the snail mail DNA. That is the Lindsay thing that keeps it all together. So again, this isn't to say that I don't like Valentine, because I do. Here's the signed vinyl from Lindsay that I own. <laughs> I think I view Valentine as an important step for Lindsay more than like an end game or a plateau or a peak. I really want and hope and predict that Lindsay's third record will really strike more of a balance between that natural talent that she has to really write some impactful music that translates from studio to live and back with that experimentation that she did on Valentine. If you have those two elements in the same record, I feel like you're gonna have something that's absolutely crazy, like probably her best record. <laughs> and it's gonna be so uniquely snail mail that you can't miss it. Let me know what you think below. Am I overthinking this whole thing? I tend to overthink everything, <laughs> but uh, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.